Hello. I saw a post on Facebook in one of the special interest groups I'm a member of, I think 7173 Mustangs, where recently he had replaced a water pump and the lower hose blew off the pump because he doesn't think he tightened it properly. That happens. He put the hose back on, filled the radiator with coolant again, and started running into a problem where the engine would warm up really fast. But apparently there isn't any coolant circulating. Now, at this point, I'm speculating because I think I know what probably happened. So this session is going to be about why it is important to bleed or burp a cooling system after taking coolant out of it and how to do it without running the engine up warm to do it. So here's the problem. When an engine cooling system is drained all of the coolant from the engine and the radiator goes out of the radiator into a pan usually, hopefully. And then when it's refilled, the engine block and cylinder heads have coolant system jackets, water jackets that are typically filled with coolant. The problem is they're full of air because the old coolant was drained out. Now one would think as you pour in coolant in the radiator, the coolant goes out the bottom radiator hose into the engine and it will fill the engine and heads cooling or coolant um, jackets with coolant as a radiator fills. They'd be right, except for one little problem. This is a Ford 351 Windsor engine. Most engines are going to be like this back in the old days and even newer. But of course, every manufacturer is a little different down then. The radiator hose on this engine goes into a thermostat cover. Hard to see past this fuel line, but it's back here. Move your hand a little bit because you can't see it. Okay. And inside that thermostat housing is the thermostat. Well, here's what a thermostat looks like. Uh, put the light off of it here, shine into. Basically, a thermostat is a little gateway, if you will. This goes in the thermostat housing, and on the one side is the engine. The other side is where the upper radiator hose is located. Right in here. When the thermostat is cool, it is closed. And so what happens is as coolant is poured in the radiator, some of it will go into the engine, but as that coolant level rises, there is air trapped between this side of the thermostat and the engine block and the air cannot escape and so the coolant at some point stops raising or if there's any bleeding of air in here at all which there could be some theoretically it bleeds very very slowly and what happens is that this thermostat gets put in place gets all bolted down, someone starts the engine, 
and the cooling system jackets of the engine are not fully encapsulated with coolant like they should be. Same with the cylinder heads. And so they get really, really hot. At some point, it may get hot enough or enough heat gets down to this little wax pellet inside a small wax pellet container and the thermostat will open. But by then, the cylinders and cylinder heads of the engine are really, really hot. Much hotter than when the thermostat should have opened, if it even gets that far. So to keep that from happening, and so there's adequate coolant protecting the engine and cylinder heads, we need some way of bleeding off that air trapped behind the thermostat. There's a few ways to do it. I've seen quite a few YouTube videos about folks burping or bleeding in the cooling system. All of them that I've seen do it when the engine is warm and they talk about turn the heater on, you squeeze the upper hose, they all miss the point as to why it's a problem and how to fix it. I'm glad they tried doing something, but the information is not complete and in some cases incorrect. One way some old school technicians try to fix this problem is by taking a thermostat and up here in the inner part of the plate that separates the engine from the radiator hose coolant, they drill a small hole, eighth of an inch. It's enough so that when the thermostat is in place and there's coolant being filled in the engine, air will escape through that small hole and the engine and cylinder heads will fill. That will work, but it takes some time to happen. And I don't necessarily like the idea of modifying a thermostat to accomplish that, even though technically it will work. So here's how I like to do it. With this engine, and again, the engine you're working on will probably be a little different if it's not a 289 or 302 or 351 Windsor engine. There's two heater hoses that go back to the heater core. There's one that comes from the pump and one that goes into the intake manifold where there is a coolant passageway. What I like to do, and this is a poor example because there's nothing wrong with this particular cooling system. It is filled properly, already bled, but I don't feel like draining out this coolant just to do a video when I don't really have to, as this is easy. First thing I do is I open up the radiator. And this is cold, by the way. Don't do this on a hot engine. And make sure there's enough coolant in there to start. The next thing I do is I loosen the heater hose for the heater, a heater hose clamp for the heater hose going into the intake manifold. And this is easy to do. Even though I'm going to take my time doing it slowly. In my case, the heater hose clamp takes a 5 16 socket. And I hope Linda is able to get this. I'm trying to get in there. <laughs> and I just loosen it enough. So, I can move it up on the heater hose, get it out of the way. Oh, 
I <laughs> didn't loosen it enough. And once it's out of the way, away from the end of that heater hose, I go ahead and I take that hose off of the inlet port. Now when I do that, if there was air trapped in the block and the heads, the air will come rushing out and the coolant in the radiator through the lower hose will fill the engine. When that's done, you see coolant come out of the intake manifold port area, which you see in a moment. Oh, look, it is low. I get to put coolant in here. Well, you see, I'm glad I'm doing this now. Um, if you look on the other side of that post, there's a antifreeze container. Mm -hmm. If you could grab that, please. And this antifreeze that I purchase is pre-mixed. A lot of people like to use concentrated antifreeze to add their own water. That's fine, except for one thing. Tap water from the faucet often has hard water compounds in it, and they will cause scaling and hard water deposits inside the radiator over time, which can plug up the cooling tubes. I have found it far better to use premix because they use apparently distilled water when they mix. The question you're going to fill this, it's supposedly coming out the other end that you untapped, yes. right? Okay, I got you. Okay. Um, do you want to walk around the car and show as it comes out? Okay, sure. I'll give them a view of the car as we walk yeah, around. Let's look at that pretty car. Oh, that's a pretty car. There we go, around the car. Whoops, we're going to show the Del Sol. <laughs> As you can tell, this is Gil's car. Okay, I'm on the other side. Okay. And hold on, I want to look and see where that area was that you... Is that it right there? That's it right there, that open pipe. I got it on. I'm going to start pouring in the coolant, and I'll let you tell me when you see it coming out. Okay. It may be a little while. I might have to get more coolant. I don't know yet. How come it was so low? Don't know. I might have a leak and didn't know it. I'll check all my connections, all the tight, all the clamps. Okay, nothing yet. Oops, I see it raising. Slow down. It's bouncing up and down. It's got a good another half an inch to come up. Okay. I'll put in some more. Up. Quarter an inch. Okay. Almost one up and over. And it's full. Okay, so if we have done this correctly, and I believe I have, there is no air inside the cylinder block or the heads and the cooling jackets. Okay, that does look like it's going down. That was level, and now it's not level anymore. Yeah, it might be seeping us in some other places, but this is fine. Okay. That gets rid of all of the air on the back side of the thermostat. So now as the engine starts up and warms up, there is coolant 
up against that thermostat and as the coolant gets warm it can properly transfer the heat to the back side of the thermostat where the wax pellet is located and it'll open this up properly so now for my next trick I put the cooling hose back in place and I move the hose clamp down to where it needs to be so I can tighten it back up. We're going to switch spots again. Okay, am I going to need to stay over here or go over there? Um, come over in the driver's side if you would, please. Okay. So now the clamp is apparently in place. I say apparently because I don't have it lined up with where I'm looking visually with the light. Now I do. Get this all lined up. And then I tighten up that clamp. Now, Linda asked a really good question earlier in this clip. Why did the level go down? And I don't have a good answer for that other than, well, it did. So for that reason, I am doubly glad I took the time to put this video together to show how to burp a system because I got to refill or top off our system while at the same time showing how to bleed it with a cold engine. There we go. Took me a while to get it around the clamp. So now what I'm gonna do is tighten this clamp down and then I'm going to show how to test for leaks. That will be another video. Make sure you put the radio to cap back on when you're done with this. You can cut.